A gigantic fire canyon formed after a solar storm. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory depicted this huge plasma explosion in spectacular detail. In this video, we will discuss what NASA has just admitted, which changes everything. Stay till the end to learn about the odd solar activity. After a solar flare, charged particles from the Sun reached Earth in April 2022 and again on August 9. They blasted into Earth's magnetosphere at 600 kilometers slash, causing auroras. Canada and the U.S. saw the northern lights. Experts believe our luck was a fluke this time. If a stronger solar storm had hit Earth, it may have been catastrophic. Solar storms have wiped out at least two cities. When our sun is nearing its peak activity again, another large plasma burst is possible. Current sunspot activity and the next major solar storm's effects on Earth have prompted concerns. The corona's protons and electrons form the solar wind. These charged particles move the solar system at 250 to 500 miles, 400 to 800 kilometers per second in plasma. Solar wind propels charged particles into the magnetosphere and magnetic field lines of the Earth, where they collide and travel to the poles. These particles can cause stunning or world displays over the polar region. Pioneering astrophysicist Eugene Parker proposed the solar wind. Parker realized in 1957 that the sun's superheated corona should produce charged particles at high speeds. Solar physicists don't understand why the sun's atmosphere is hotter than its surface. Parker's theory said that plasma in the sun's corona is heated to 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit. The solar wind carries the sun's magnetic field when plasma becomes too hot to hold. In 2018, Parker said his theory was widely questioned. The article's initial reviewer advised Parker to go to the library and read up on the subject before he tries to write a paper about it. Because this is utter rubbish, astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar, the namesake of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, supported this notion. According to the University of Chicago, Chandrasekhar accepted Parker's theory since Parker's calculations were correct. In 1962, NASA's Mariner 2 spacecraft traveling to Venus spotted solar wind particles. In addition to solar wind, the Sun occasionally emits significant amounts of charged particles. Coronal mass ejections CMEs, can generate geomagnetic storms in Earth's atmosphere, which cause the stunning aurora displays but they can also destroy power grids, telephone networks, and satellites. How far does the solar wind reach? The heliosphere, a huge bubble created by the solar wind, extends beyond Pluto's orbit. NASA says the heliosphere moves with the sun like a windsock. ESA says the heliosphere's nearest border is 100 AU from the sun. There are approximately 93 million miles between Earth and the sun. Cosmic rays can damage cells, yet the heliosphere protects humans. Cosmic rays originate outside our solar system and move nearly at the speed of light. Without our bubble, high-energy atom fragments would pummel Earth. The solar wind's density and speed vary over the sun's 11-year cycle. Sunspot counts, radiation levels, and ejected material cycle from a solar maximum to a solar minimum. These variations affect the solar wind's magnetic field, speed, temperature, and density. Earth's solar wind averages 190 miles every second. Mariner 2 found two solar wind streams, one fast and one slow, during the Venus flyby. NASA said that the slow stream traveled 215 miles per hour and the rapid stream traveled twice that speed. Skylab's X-ray photographs of the sun's corona revealed the rapid solar wind source in 1973. Coronal holes, cooler regions of the sun with open magnetic field lines that allow solar wind to escape, cause rapid solar winds. Solar winds can accelerate during CMEs. CME winds can exceed 600 miles per hour. How have solar flares influenced Earth? And may the sun's peak activity in 2023 threaten it? Coronal mass ejections can reach Earth in two to six days, despite the sun's distance. High-energy particles can travel the same distance in two minutes. 
only a small percentage of these particles passed through the atmosphere and smashed gas molecules to emit light. Planetary magnetic fields divert the rest to the poles. The Sun occasionally produces massive flares with 10 to 25 joules of energy. Millions of 100 megaton hydrogen bombs are equivalent. Plasma travels twice as fast during solar storms. It blasts Earth's magnetic field so hard that charged particles can pierce or deform it. The strongest geomagnetic storms can cause many disasters. Richard Carrington saw a big solar flare on September 2, 1859. 18 hours later, Earth experienced the biggest geomagnetic storm ever. That day, many telegraph poles were torched across Europe and North America, crippling the networks. The northern lights were seen worldwide. Mankind recovered quickly, although we used less electricity back then. In March 1989, another major solar storm left millions without power in Quebec for 12 hours. This solar flare was weak. If the next solar outburst matches the Carrington event, the most intense geomagnetic storm ever witnessed, Earth faces doom. Solar storms like this were thought to occur only once every century, according to experts. Warwick University and British Antarctic Survey researchers examined solar flare trends. Intense magnetic storms happen more often than expected. Solar activity repeats every 11 years. During its peak, the sun emits charged particles toward Earth. Scientists studied Earth's magnetic field history. The findings supported the idea that geomagnetic activity surges during the strongest solar outbursts. The research team identified two types of Earth-threatening disasters, intense magnetic superstorms and megastorms. The former occurs every three years. These changes can be detrimental for weather-dependent people. These issues rarely cause major technical failures. Megastorms are infrequent. Scientists have recorded six similar events in 150 years. Hence, solar storms hit Earth every quarter century. There have been no big storms in 20 years. Scientists predict one in the near future. In 2012, the sun exploded, but Earth was protected by the solar wind. Steve auroras can be visible with intense solar activity. Steve was spotted as purple or white ribbons in southern Pennsylvania during the August 2022 geomagnetic storm. Scientists worry that Steve and a mega storm might cause havoc. Mega storms and Steve might damage the power grid, communication networks, and satellites. Disruption of the ocean bottom cables that connect houses to the internet might cause a global internet outage lasting months. Damage could cost billions or trillions. If a big solar wind impacted Earth in 2012, numerous countries may still be recovering. Solar storms cause droughts, earthquakes, floods, and tsunamis. The 2004 Indonesian 9.1 magnitude earthquake was connected to increased solar activity by scientists. This natural disaster killed 283,000 people and displaced over a million. Solar storms need early warning systems. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory SOHO, and Solar Dynamics Observatory SDO, are two spacecraft monitoring the sun to understand unusual events. New research shows that large geomagnetic storms can hit Earth even when the sun is quiet, breaking the 11-year activity cycle. An unprecedented solar storm hit Earth 9,200 years ago, according to ancient ice samples. Many governments stress the importance of accurate space weather forecasts since potentially catastrophic solar storms might occur at any time. Finally, severe geomagnetic storms and uncommon mega storms can result from the sun's activity. These catastrophes can hurt individuals and disrupt power grids and communications. Scientists are monitoring the sun's activities to prepare for the next major solar storm due in the coming years. That's it for today. Like this video and subscribe to our channel to see more helpful videos like this. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.